That's the first question. What's an ETF? No, actually you tell me. What's the full form of an ETF? Electronic Transfer Fund? No. Exchange Traded Fund. Exchange means? Exchange. No, no. Stock exchange. Traded means can be traded like stocks. And fund means it's fund exactly like an index fund. So if they're pretty much the same, why are we doing this video? We already made a video about no, yeah, this. Actually, you're right. An index fund and an ETF are both passive investments, which means you're investing in, say, Nifty Next 50 or Nifty 50 or something of that sort. But the way is slightly different. What does that mean? So first tell me, what's an index fund? Index fund is a group of stocks put in together like you put in Nifty 50 yeah, and perfect. they're managed by your fund managers so passively. Perfect. So Nifty 50 stocks, the fund manager basically replicates the existing index. He does not pick the stocks, which makes it passive. Correct. So you're passively investing in Nifty 50 companies right. through this fund. Hmm. What, what What does it actually cost? You mean NAV? Yeah, the NAV. Net asset value. Correct. So you buy units, correct? Right. So you're buying units, it could be 1 unit, 5 units, 10 units, etc. Whatever amount you're investing right. and this changes once a day. Correct. Now, imagine the same thing but being listed on the stock exchange like a stock. Okay. And this fund you can actually trade. So because people are buying and selling, there is no NAV. The, the price of that ETF is changing in real time as people are buying and as people are selling. Like individual stocks. Exactly like individual stocks. Like this over here. All of these here are ETFs. And look, the price is also changing. Hmm. So the only difference between the two is that in index fund, the NOE is selected once and in ETFs, it keeps changing. That's all. No, I mean, there's some more changes. So one is that you need a DMAT account for ETFs and you don't need a DMAT account for index funds. The other is that dono ka cost is different. So an ETF is actually cheaper than even an index fund. Oh. So the difference is 0.01% and this is 0 0.01 to 0.3%. So you have to check what the difference is, but in many cases, ETFs are actually cheaper. And finally, you can't actually do a SIP on an ETF because it's trading on the stock exchange, right? Only a few brokers in India provide SIP options in ETFs. Otherwise, you have to basically open that account, log into your trading account, place the order every month. So it's like a lump sum thing and not... I mean, you can do it every month manually, but I thought ETF was just for gold. That's what we talked about last time. Yeah, think of ETFs like a structure and you can put anything in that structure. So, for example, you have index ETFs. I mean, that tracks the performance of a specific market index like Nifty 50 or Next 50. They give you a broad exposure to all the stocks in that index. Then we have uh, sector ETFs. And these sector ETFs focus on specific industries like uh, IT or healthcare or financial services. And they allow you to invest in a group of companies operating in a particular sector. Then we have uh, bond ETFs or debt ETFs. Bond ETFs invest in governments or corporate bonds, basically the debt instruments. And these are usually less volatile than stock ETFs. And then finally, you have uh, commodity ETFs. These ETFs invest in physical commodities such as gold or silver. And they'll basically give you exposure to commodity markets without you having to directly go and buy physical goods like gold or silver somewhere. So basically, each type of ETF is made for a different investment goal. Actually, let me show you something. These are all the Nifty 50 ETFs. Look at the volume here, very large number. Look at the volume here, very small number. What do you notice? It's decreasing. Yeah, so that means out of all the ETFs, the top five ETFs are like a very large percentage of all the ETFs being traded. The rest don't have any volume. This is the biggest risk. Just make sure you don't pick a low liquid ETF. I mean, that's a very specific thing to look at while investing in the value and like, how does this value of this current day change when I invest again later? Like, this is if I'm doing it in the same day, right? Yeah. But what if like I get it and then I sell it later, then this does Doesn't it still matter. affect? This is the number that was traded today. Hmm. That means there are enough buyers and sellers on this today. fund today. Right. It's likely in the future the number of buyers and sellers will remain because we see trade karing it. So the next point is ETF ka cost. So generally an ETF will cost less than an index fund. But the ETF also has other costs that the index fund doesn't. 
like there's stamp duty, STT charges, there is brokerage. Right. So you have to add all that up. But you should be okay. I don't think you should stress on this too much. If you're thinking about investing over the next 10 years, 12 years, it's all right. Index or ETF, both are fine. And the third point is, make sure you're buying something which has a low tracking error. So Nifty 50 is moving in a certain way and the ETF or an index fund is supposed to track that exact same thing, right? Right. But the exact same thing track not track. Yes, yes. That's fine. Why is there a difference? Sometimes it can, I think, manual human error was... Human error, it takes time to reinvest, dividend target takes time to put it in, fund has inflows, outflows. But this difference can't be too much. Right. So the tracking error is fine, it's not able to track and therefore it's an error, it can't be too large. Hmm. So all you need to do is, type in the top three ETFs you are looking to buy, type tracking error, you'll get Google results, click on them to find out what is the tracking error for each of your ETFs. Right. The lowest one is the better choice. Got it. That's it. So I think the real question is, why are you investing in ETFs? To make money. So in fact, I want to ask you the real question, which is where should I invest in index funds or ETFs? You'll hate this answer, but actually we are investing in index fund so that we don't worry about the markets. It sounds very counterintuitive, but what you really have to do is nothing. The more you do nothing and the less you react to the ups and downs of the market, even today, I check the market almost every single day. Even though I don't trade as much and I just do long-term investing, I have a habit to check and find if there's an opportunity of a stock I can buy. This may not actually be good. The person who will do better than me is a person who doesn't care where the market is. So as counterintuitive as it sounds, your job is to not do anything and just focus on your trips you're making, your job and the fest. Mm, of course, the fest. Is it done? The fest? Yes. Of course not. Now I've answered all your questions. Now go finish your work. And if you have any questions, put it in the comments below and see you in the 